So today I'm taking us back to the early days of Dragon Ball Z with a tale which really came across my mind thanks to somebody on Twitter and it made me think quite heavily. You know, back when things were much less complicated and Saiyans were all the rage, we couldn't get enough of them. Now we want enough of them in some ways. The stage is set for something pretty significant to happen if one small action didn't occur. What if Piccolo never saved Gohan? But Masako, which time did Piccolo save Gohan are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know. Piccolo saves Gohan is kind of a thing in Dragon Ball. Even the movies make fun of it. The occasion that I am talking about is probably what you might describe as the second time that he did. Because remember the time when Piccolo sacrificed himself and his journey from becoming the nemesis of the show to becoming an anti-hero and somewhat ally of the show was completed? Well, let's just say that that end result didn't happen or it didn't happen quick enough. It is the time of the Saiyan Saga. We have lost Ten Shinhan and Yamcha, and Nappa is getting sick and tired of these three Earth dweebs getting in his way. Goku has now arrived on Earth, and he is busily rushing to the scene in order to start fighting and save the day. But then, Nappa unleashes one of his ultimate attacks, the Bomber DX. It approaches Gohan with such speed and such ferocity that Piccolo isn't able to get there in time. Well, at least fully, like in the original. Not only does Piccolo lose an arm, but Gohan is effectively hit by almost the full blast of the Bomber DX, and it's enough, I think, to end the boy's life pretty quickly. Piccolo is devastated. You may think that just because he didn't save Gohan means he's still a bad guy. No, he still had the journey of actually finding his softer side, it just didn't have the end point. Krillin is also horrified and they both turn to Nappa with a look of anger upon their faces, despite the fact they really can't do much at this point. And this is where Goku shows up. Goku asks where Gohan is because he can't sense his energy. Is he hiding? Has he been beaten up or something? What? What's going on? But then he turns to see Gohan's body, motionless. His first instinct and assumption is that Piccolo had something to do with it and he immediately turns to the Namekian, demanding to know what the hell happened. And of course, naturally, he lands a punch on the Namekian in a fit of rage. Piccolo is also stunned and he tries to explain rather flusteredly that he tried to save Gohan but he couldn't make it in time. It was down to that brute Saiyan Nappa over there that did the actual final blow. Goku is now inconsolable. His only son has been slain by his own race. He doesn't know what to do. He wished that these Saiyans never arrived on Earth. Unlike in the anime, where there's a little bit of bravado and Goku powering up rather dramatically, there is none of that here. Goku, just, he's gonna throw tradition out the window, he powers up instantly. In fact, so instantly that Vegeta can't even read it out off the scouter. But to be fair, he doesn't need to, because Goku is quite clearly wailing on Nappa. Now you might be wondering if Goku has a bit more of a rage boost thanks to Gohan's passing. Well, yeah, let's just say it's over 10,000. The fight continues for a while and things are pretty even despite the slight bump in power thanks to all the frustration and anger and emotions inside Goku. But things start to come to a head when Vegeta unleashes the Powerball technique and instead of actually winning big on the lottery, Vegeta wins big and grows big into the Great Eight. Despite Goku's increase in power, the fact that if you're going up against a Nazaru, mm, the game is up. Goku then tries to launch a spirit bomb, but he's knocked around some more and eventually his legs are crushed and the spirit bomb is barely holding. He cannot move. Krillin and Piccolo can sense Goku really starting to fail and they notice the power ball up in the sky. Piccolo remembering it from times of Gohan's training and Krillin remembering it from, you know, the old days. When they get closer, the scene is pretty clear. In a fit of desperation, Krillin then tries to launch a Destructo disc to try and cut off Vegeta's tail, and you know how well that's gonna work. Goku spots Piccolo and tells him to get out of there so that means they can still use the Dragon Balls and Kami's not whisked away from this mortal coil. Piccolo angrily tells Goku that he can't do that, he can't leave Goku, but Vegeta picks up on this and senses that Maybe it's best to take out Piccolo. Piccolo and Krillin are now trying to just dance their way around the Great Ape as Goku's trying to charge the Spirit Bomb, despite the fact that he's trying to fall back the pain of the fact that his legs are crushed. Piccolo is losing, but then he remembers there might be one last thing that he can do in order to counter Vegeta. Piccolo powers up and begins to grow in scale in order to actually match the size of the Great Ape because the super giant Namekian power? Yeah, it's back, baby. Yeah, his powers increase quite a bit, but it's not quite the same as Vegeta's, but Vegeta's quite surprised, so 
he's a bit stumbled right now. He's able to at least hold Vegeta back from crushing Goku. So here we have it. The Great Ape and the giant Namekian duking it out in the wasteland, tearing the scene apart. Having not used this form in a while, Piccolo's now starting to tire out, whereas Vegeta, who is in complete control of his being, is now slowly starting to push Piccolo forward and trying to topple him over, so that means he accidentally crushes Goku and Krillin. Piccolo is knocked down, he's about to be dealt the final blow, but then Yajirobe comes back on the scene, thankfully having the distraction of the giant Piccolo there, and cuts off Vegeta's tail. And then, sure enough, Vegeta reverts back to his more humanoid form. Having been knocked down, Piccolo can now regain his composure and get back up, noticing that the great ape is nowhere to be seen. He looks down and spots Vegeta, looking very flustered and scared down on the ground. Their eyes meet and Piccolo grins mercilessly. His old pappy King Piccolo is now channeling his evil thoughts throughout Piccolo's mind. With Vegeta distracted, Goku gives the power of the spirit bomb to Krillin in order to actually administer it. Piccolo, however, his really brash bravado is an in incredible pain because this form does hurt a lot. Goku tells Krillin to throw the bomb now, but Krillin doesn't want to risk hitting Piccolo in the process. But just then, Piccolo returns to his normal size and crumples down onto the ground in an incredible agony. And Vegeta's now looking triumphant, saying, Ha! It's not so good now, is it, Namekian? But of course, the prince is now really getting cocky, and this is the perfect opportunity for Krillin to throw the bomb in Vegeta's direction. Vegeta's not expecting it, Krillin hurls it, and the area explodes! Vegeta got almost a direct hit thanks to the bomb. He was lucky that it did not actually hit his body. But still, he is now in incredible agony and desperately trying to get back to his ship. Oh, that's gonna hurt tomorrow. But when he gets to the pod, Piccolo and Krillin are there to meet him, with Krillin holding Yajirobe's sword. He is about to strike when Goku tells him to stop and let him go. Piccolo and Krillin then round on Goku and remind him that this guy is responsible for the death of their friends as well as Goku's son. Goku then remembers the fact, but he still wants to fight Vegeta again because, you know, they can bring Goku back with the Dragon Balls, but Piccolo is having none of it. Piccolo does the job for him and blasts the prince to Kingdom Come, killing him. The prince is dead. Goku is shocked, but ultimately understands why. And of course, Piccolo is absolutely furious because he really grew to love Gohan. So he's understandably furious. Gohan gave him a life and Gohan's life has been taken. So he's going to stand up for the little kid. Now, both Vegeta and Nappa have perished on the planet Earth. With Piccolo alive, both Kami and the Dragon Balls are still safe. However, there is quite a somber mood because no one is quite sure what to do about the fates of Ten Shinhan, Shoutsu, Yamcha, and now Gohan. And not to mention all the people that were killed by the Saiyans prior to that. They could use Shenron to wish them all back to life, but remember, they just used them to bring Goku back to life. They're gonna have to wait a whole year to use them again. And there's a rarely acknowledged rule saying that if a person has been dead for over a year, Shenron can't wish them back, even if they hadn't died prior. So maybe there's just a few hours window where they can gather all the Dragon Balls across the world, get back, figure out what they want to wish for, and then use them. The only thing that they can do right now is what Krillin suggested in the original story. Find Nemec, see if they have Dragon Balls, and wish on them too. Despite King Kai's concerns that the planet might be gone, Krillin and Piccolo are at least keen to try because they have got no other idea. Because if they don't do it, Gohan might be dead forever, as well as everyone else. So in a way, it increases the urgency in order to get to Nemec. There's a lot more consequence riding on this decision. There's a lot more peril, and Dragon Ball, especially Dragon Ball Z, needs a lot more peril that actually sticks. Thankfully though, Vegeta's pod is still intact, and Bulma is able to use that, coupled with the Namekian spaceship that Mr. Popo and her find, as well as Goku's old spaceship, in order to actually create a more refined engine with an updated technology that means it can get to a potential Nemec much faster than in the original story. Piccolo, who was unable to help Gohan in his time of need, volunteers to go to Nemec in order to actually try and help the boy. And Krillin decides to go too for a similar reason. But naturally, the fact that Piccolo is not really someone who can really talk, the flight is less than civil. Piccolo is just sat in the corner, meditating, not wanting to talk to everyone, figuring out a plan about what they're going to do when they get to the planet. Understandably, Piccolo is also nervous, but he doesn't want to share it with anyone because they're going to his home planet, he might be able to figure out who he is and what his purpose is, as well as actually seeing people that are just like him. It's pretty intimidating if you think about it. So what happens about Freezer? Does he still go to Nemec? Well, 
yeah, Vegeta didn't stop him going. The conversation about Namekian Dragon Ball still happened on Earth between Nappa and Vegeta and Piccolo was there to confirm it, so understandably, Frieza's still gonna want to go investigate. The Emperor's goons pieced together information about what they heard as well as what they could find, and suggested that Planet Namek might be somewhere over here, and it might be worth going to check out. The Empire heads for Namek. There is no fake Namek. Moving on. With the addition of Vegeta's pod's technology, the gang are able to get to Nemec about a full two days earlier than they would have done normally, about six days or so. All of this results in the fact when Bulma, Piccolo and Krillin arrive on Nemec, they have now reached the point when Frieza's forces only have just arrived. Frieza's forces have barely acquired the first Dragon Ball. Without Vegeta there, the gang present are less likely to lose their nerve and they're able to slip about unnoticed because Frieza's forces are unaware of their existence. And because there's no Vegeta, there is no Kui either. And without their tussle and Kui's demise, Zarbon isn't alerted to anything amiss going on on Planet Nemec, so that means they can continue without any kind of distraction, and that's good for our heroes. Meanwhile, like in the original story, Goku's given a sensor beam by Yajirobe, is back up to full strength, heads over to Capture Corp in order to actually acquire a spaceship of his own, so that means he can train and head for Nemec as well to help out Piccolo, Krillin and Bulma. And again, thanks to the data from Fujita's pod as well as Goku's pod and the Mechian ship, Goku is able to also head to Nemec four days instead of six. As Bulma settles down in a nearby cave with her own capsules, Piccolo and Krillin then head over to a nearby Namekian village, which, incidentally, is the same one that has the Elder Mori, as well as Dende and Cargo. With Piccolo there, Krillin feels they might be able to blend in a little bit more easily and get what they want sooner. The Elder is curious to see a brand new Namekian he hasn't seen before, and starts to communicate with Piccolo in the Namekian tongue. Piccolo is rather confused because he can't understand it, but then, somewhere, deep in his mind, something's telling him, yeah, you recognize this language. I think he's trying to say this. And Piccolo, rather clumsily, is trying to communicate in this Namekian language based on a deeply locked memory somewhere in his subconscious. Piccolo then explains to Mori the reason that they come is in order to try and bring back some of their friends who were slain in an unhonorable manner back to life, and their Dragon Balls are unable to do the job. Mori is shocked to see that there are other Dragon Balls around in existence, and then Piccolo, thanks to the help of Kami, is able to explain that he was once a Namekian that used to live here, but due to the cataclysm that happened many centuries ago, they managed to escape, and Mori's really fascinated by this. And remember, Frieza's forces are here and they have acquired the first Dragon Ball, so word has spread to Mori that a tyrant has arrived, slaying people mercilessly. So the fact that these guys are so much more amicable and one of them's a Namekian, it would make much more sense to go and help them instead of the tyrant. Mori gives them the Dragon Ball on the condition that Piccolo and Krillin try to figure out a way to stop this menace. Mori gives them the ball and smiles at Piccolo and then welcomes him home. And I think that's where we will leave all this stuff for this edition. Without the absence of Gohan for the time being, Piccolo is able to grow as a character much quicker than in the original story. He is weighed down with remorse due to Gohan's passing and the fact that he couldn't do much about it and is now trying to seek a way in order to right a wrong. As a result, with Piccolo being there, he's able to reconnect with his roots. We return to our story with our scout party having gained a Dragon Ball from Elder Mori, stunned to see a new Namekian around. I mean, since there are only a couple of hundred Namekians left on planet Namek, seeing a different one is quite the event. Having conversed in a very awkward exchange in their local tongue, Piccolo is starting to feel more accepted by the locals. I mean, after all, Namekians are good-natured beings at the best of times and when things are going well. And hey, it's new people! Social activity! Mori suggests that young Dende accompany Piccolo and Krillin if they are seeking more Dragon Balls. Some village elders may be less hospitable or less trusting of someone new or someone completely off-world, but with the presence of Dende, one of their own, it might make things a little bit easier. Dende, though, is scared to be leaving his village and his little brother behind, and that's Cargo, by the way, although they are technically all related since Elder Guru is their father? It's all a little weird and something to discuss at a later date, but not right now. Nonetheless, Mori isn't worried since Piccolo looks pretty strong, and he could use his support at least in terms of social skills. Dende reluctantly agrees, muttering the Namekian protestations, thinking that Piccolo wouldn't hear. Oh, Dende, remember how Namekians have good hearing? Maybe he wanted Piccolo to hear? Either way, 
Piccolo can sense that Frieza's energy is present, and it is incredibly frightful. He then suggests to Mori that they should evacuate the village immediately, as something wicked this way is coming, and may be too late to stop. The Elder plus the other residents are rather unsettled by this idea, not sure whether to trust this newcomer, but Dende can sense the seriousness in his tone. This is not a joke. He may be a new guy, but he knows what he's talking about. Dende nods to Mori, and the Elder complies. They begin to pack their belongings up and leave the village, heading into the mountains, or whatever hillock they can find in the sea of green, which is the grass and the sky. But all no matter, cargo shall live. Meanwhile, Goku is on his way to Namek, but we have a problem here. In the original anime, he had six days in which to train. This time though, he only has four, two less. Okay, he gets to Nemec sooner than in the original timeline, but at the cost of two days worth of training. And as we know, at that time in the Dragon Ball Z story, that's a lot. So does that mean that he actually ends up arriving on Nemec weaker than he was in the original timeline? Yeah, possibly. However, he does still master Kaioken times 20, having realized that he should make the most of this gravity training with such little time. Something that he managed to sample on King Kai's planet. This is way more effective than weighted clothing, so to stack Kaioken with weighted clothing? This is a recipe for immense gains. As a result, instead of arriving on Nemec at a power level of 90,000, he's only at 60,000. Oh dear. For now though, that doesn't concern him, because he's not aware of what he could have done with six days. He's not aware of the future, like we are. Back on Nemec, Piccolo and Krillin, with the Dragon Raider at hand, start to quickly jump from township to township, requesting Dragon Balls. Now, with Dende alongside them, the requests are met with much greater ease than before, since the other residents recognise Dende. After all, there is so few of them, you pretty much know everybody. And they give them the Dragon Ball. They are at an advantage here, thanks to said radar, and the fact that Vegeta isn't around to mess things up. Frieza and his goons don't have such a luxury, instead relying on just finding them by flying around at random, so it seems. Now, because of these stratagems, Piccolo and Krillin bag four Dragon Balls in next to no time, successfully dodging the ball that is moving around all the time, which is presumably what might be in the hands of their enemies. Having secured four of the Dragon Balls, they head back to Bulma's base with Dende in tow to drop the balls off and then look for the remaining two, well, which are not in enemy captivity, later on. Speaking of enemies, Frieza and his henchmen are slowly getting more and more frustrated. Where are these blessed Dragon Balls? Where are the people? I mean, he knew that Nemec wasn't exactly well populated from what they could see, but this is ridiculous. As Frieza is cursing under his breath, Zarbon supposes the idea that maybe outside influence caused the Namekians to flee along with their Dragon Balls. Not a bad thought there, Zarbon, but how did anyone else know about their plans to come to Namek? Namek is a bit of an odd one. It's a long forgotten world on the edge of the galaxy, which the Frieza Force only found about via an indirect tip off from Vegeta and Piccolo. Who else could have it been? Piccolo. Earthlings must be here. Frieza then tells Dodoria and Zarbon to search the area around the village and erase anyone that they find and retrieve any Dragon Balls that they have by any means necessary. So, it looks like Freezer is playing a little game of Captain Mouse. This may be a minor inconvenience, but at least it makes his whole exercise being on this really dull world a little bit less tedious. As Krillin and Bulma discuss what happened and what to do next, Piccolo and Dende are talking. Piccolo is more open to talk to the young Namekian this time around, because when he looks at Dende, I mean really looks at him, he can see a lot of Gohan in the young Namekian. This unlocks a certain amount of empathy from the old Namekian. They are conversing in their native tongue, with a lot of help from Kami telepathically, and they both get a little closer. During this conversation though, Dende talks about the Grand Elder, someone who can provide even more answers than Dende could. Piccolo is intrigued. Piccolo walks over to Bulma and tells her that he plans to go and explore with Dende, trying to figure out what's what. Bulma okays this, but tells him to remember to control his power so as to not arouse suspicion. And with that, 
Piccolo and Dende are off to visit Guru. When they get there, they are greeted by Nail! Nail is skeptical at first, but then recognizes Dende. He asks the young one what he is doing there. All of this taking place in the Namekian tongue for obvious reasons. There are no foreigners around. Piccolo introduces himself as a Namekian who had just recently discovered himself, seeking the Dragon Balls to revive someone he had let down. That being, of course, Gohan. Nail consents that this Namekian isn't as powerful as he is, and also that Piccolo is being rather genuine in what he is saying. Guru consents this too, and welcomes both Piccolo and Dende into the chamber, offering to take their coats. The two then witness the Grand Elder in all his super kami glory! As you can tell, this part is focusing on Piccolo's growth, as after all, he has found his people, and he is here to save Gohan and the others. However, he is indulging in some personal self-discovery, something that Super Kami Guru can recognize and is more than happy to provide answers for. But back on Earth, Kami is listening as well, also keen to remember all of the things that he had forgotten, as well as more about their father, Katas. At the same time, Piccolo spots the Dragon Ball atop Guru's throne. Score! Not only can he find out more about himself, but he can bring back a Dragon Ball to prove to Bulma that this wasn't a waste of time. After all this is done, Guru can sense that Piccolo is curious about the Dragon Ball atop his throne. He has sensed Piccolo and Dende's journey up to now, and is willing to help out if it means it keeps the orbs out of the hands of ne'er-do-wells. Piccolo now has the fifth ball, but before he goes, Guru confesses that he doesn't have much time left, so they better get the other balls fast, or else they will become inert. He also has a parting gift for both he and Dende. He wishes to unlock their potential. This might help them in their quest. As a result, Piccolo gains a huge boost, since this power is a Namekian one, and Dende gains the ability to heal, as we know. Piccolo's power here has gone from around 4,000 to over 40,000. So why the extra leap, Masako? Personally, I feel that Piccolo has a lot more potential than the likes of Krillin and even younger Gohan did, at least at the time. Plus, I think there is an affinity bonus with the two of them being Namekians, of course. It just means that the whole potential unlocking is more potent. Krillin and Gohan had their powers multiplied by about six to eight times, so Piccolo gaining a ten times multiplier seems reasonable to me. The two leave with the Dragon Ball in tow, but Piccolo is far too keen to test out this new power and forgets what Bulma told him to do. This is amazing! He feels incredible! Incredibly stupid! Back with Freezer, Zabun and Dodoria have unfortunately found Namekian escapees and the location of a Dragon Ball, their second. After their spoils of victory, Zabon is spooked by a huge power level coming out of nowhere, speeding across the sky. He tries to track it and it's coming up with a level of 40,000. Ugh, 40,000? Where did this power come from? That's stronger than he and Dodoria are, almost combined. Trying to keep his composure though, Zabon turns to Frieza and reports that he may have found the source of their annoyance. Frieza seems pleased when he spots this as well. Dodoria has said nothing and is stock still. Frieza turns to him, seeing the look of fear on Dodoria's face. Oh, what's the matter, Dodoria? Don't tell me you're scared of a weaker power level such as that. Surely you and Zabon can deal with this pest. In fact, why don't you go and do just that? I'll finish up here. Zabon and Dodoria have no choice but to comply. The stage is set for Piccolo vs Zabon and Dodoria for the one-star Dragon Ball. As the two mooks of Frieza make their way to the source of this power, Piccolo can sense this, since with this increase in power, his ability to sense Ki, no matter how small, has heightened as well. Dende, I need you to take the Dragon Balls back to the others. Trouble's coming, and I'm gonna take care of it. You really shouldn't have reveled in this new potential being unlocked like this. By unleashing all that energy, it just made him like a candle. But at least he can do something about it. Guru quickly unlocks Dende's potential to aid him in his mission back to the hideout with the Namekian Dragon Ball. And with that, the young one flies off with his quarry. Nail is looking to Piccolo. And soon he can sense what Piccolo could. And they plan to defend Super Kami Guru to the end. I never realized that there was such a gaping hole in my past. Now I know it. I, I kind of like the idea of being a warrior from birth. There's the posturing. We have a job to do. 
Zarbon and Dodoria arrive at the tower, with Nail and Piccolo standing there ready to fight. Unaware of the fact that Nail is even stronger than Piccolo, the two minions are masking their dread and foreboding, and doing their usual bluster that is common within the Freezer Force of asking them to hand over the Dragon Ball politely, before then choosing to retaliate with something more direct. Piccolo then decides, after growing bored of all of this talking, to just power up and slam Dodoria out of his exposition. The pink goon goes flying for miles, not knowing what hit him, with Zarbon left looking surprised, but right now, not too worried. I knew this would happen. Say, you there. You've not talked. How are you? He's talking to Nail, by the way. You've not said a word since we got here. Are you just going to stand there and watch, or are you actually going to do something? Either way, I will make you do something. Nail calmly gets into position, and then unleashes his own power. Zabon's scouter is going off, and now the scouter reads that both of these powers are, or more than, 40,000, which makes him immediately regret his actions, and not taking his cohort's worries seriously. Not just one of them, but there's two. They are in the immediate firing line of people who are willing to defend their planet. They're not gonna stop. Zarbon has no choice but to power up to his beast mode immediately, and despite the boost in power, it's not enough to topple the two Namekians. By the time Dodoria flies back into position, he wishes that he should have probably just flown away. Keen to send a message back to Frieza, Piccolo and Nail prolong the beatdown on these two. When it becomes clear that these two have absolutely no answer to their beatdown, Piccolo unleashes his signature technique, and spears the pair of them at once with a special beam cannon, after masking his power to try and get into position. The pair of Freezer soldiers collapse to the ground, completely motionless. All the while, their master's eyebrows rise in astonishment. Oh, would you look at that? These slugs aren't as much of a pushover as I thought they were. Shame, really. I kind of liked those two. No matter, though. I'll let them bask in this victory for a while, before crushing their spirit later." Frieza continues to look for the other Dragon Balls on his own, choosing not to call the Ginyu Force yet, because no matter, he's almost done anyway. I think that might turn out though to be a big mistake. Nail is relieved to have Piccolo here with him, since it might have been tough to take on both of these guys on his own, as well as ensuring that one of them didn't try and take out Guru without him knowing it. And speaking of Guru, he pipes up from inside the tower. Nail, Piccolo, I fear that our time together may be about to end. They rush in and see that Guru is looking even weaker. The potential unlock took its toll, and the Elder is on the verge of passing. He then tells Nail that the only way to stop Freezer would maybe to use the art of Namekian assimilation, or as we know it, Fusion. Piccolo recalls this term being bandied about during Guru's crash course earlier, and immediately this sets up a conflict. Might this mean that he would lose his essence and maybe sense of self? Would he just go into Nail's body? Nail is feeling the same way. Since he isn't about to succumb to Frieza's injuries in this timeline, he doesn't see the need to give up his identity and sense of self either. The two of them stare at each other, and this drags on longer and longer until it's Guru who is starting to cough loudly, showing real frustration. Nail! Cease this at once! If I die, then there will be nothing left to stop that monster from destroying our home! Join forces with Piccolo! I can't, Lord Guru. I'm tended to protect you with my life! Very well. Then you are relieved of your duty. This shocks both of the warriors. Without this burden, you are free to do as you see is right for the safety of our people. Choose wisely, Nao. Nao looks to Piccolo, now feeling quite empty. His only mission for years was to guard Guru and Guru's tower. Since he no longer had that role to do, he had nothing left. He didn't expect that. Piccolo, on the other hand, is on the upswing and compels him to fuse as this power could be ridiculously huge. Meanwhile, Krillin, Goku, and the others are all plotting their next move, with another Dragon Ball acquisition on the horizon, hoping not to run into Freezer. But then Goku senses something. He then spots Dende entering the chamber with a Dragon Ball, and the group are as pleased as Punch. But then suddenly, something else catches their attention, as well as Freezer's. 
Piccolo and Nail have fused together to create a Namekian with the power level of... of... well nobody knows. Since Piccolo's power is now 10 times more than it was when he fused with Nail in the original timeline, and Nail's energy is pretty much full because he's not hurt, this fusion is incredible! You thought Piccolo felt great in the original, yeah? He's never felt so good. Nail's essence is still inside him, and thanks to it, he feels even more compelled to avenge Gohan, and he makes a beeline straight for Frieza, this time concealing his power, remembering his previous mistake. Frieza felt a blip on his scouter, but it was only for a split second before dissipating. <laughs> Stupid contraption! I really should get this upgraded. It's starting to play tricks with me. He's about to bear down on the next village with a Dragon Ball, before he spots a solitary Namekian standing ahead of him, Piccolo. Oh my goodness, you didn't have to go to all of this effort to greet me, random citizen. I was about to do the honors myself. Now, do go and tell your kin I'm here for your Dragon Ball, would you? Piccolo stands still, without saying a word. He can sense Freeze's power, and what once felt mighty and terrifying and absolutely insurmountable barely even flickers his interest. Even he couldn't get a grasp on his power, but he knew Freezer's mattered not to him anymore. Ah, the strong silent type, are we? Well, I'll make sure you can remain silent for the rest of eternity if you do not stand aside, slug filth. Piccolo throws off his cape and turban and gets into his stance. <laughs> Cute. Is this one of your, um... Uh, rituals you primitive creatures have or something. Piccolo powers up and almost at once Freezer's scouter shatters into pieces and Freezer is sent flying backwards being hurled out of his travel pod not knowing what just happened. You could say that, smirks Piccolo. Goku is absolutely blown away by this level from Piccolo. He immediately has to rush out to find him. He wants to see this up close. You know Goku, he's obsessed. He leaves the others to hold the fort, maybe using this diversion perhaps to scoop up the last Dragon Balls. Now without his scouter for sure, he cannot call the Ginyu Force after all. Perhaps Frieza should have done that, but this wasn't something to be scared of still. After all, he has his transformations to fall back on. Right? Piccolo immediately clotheslines Frieza into a mountain, which leaves the Emperor even more nonplussed. Dazed and confused, the tyrant tries to look around for any signs of that jumped up invertebrate. But since he can't sense energy himself and he doesn't have any technology to help him, he's a sitting duck. Piccolo then shouts from up above and this catches Frieza's attention and then to the hundreds of energy balls circling around his position. Hey, are these the balls you wanted so badly? Here, take them! Piccolo hunches over and Frieza is instantly vaporized. Well, fusion, eh? The one that Piccolo never had his potential unlocked. The saga would have been over way sooner than before if he had. When the smoke clears, Goku has arrived to witness the carnage, congratulate Piccolo, and then actually feel kind of sad that he didn't get a chance to do anything here. It was all just a wasted trip. However, the Namekian is feeling serious all of a sudden. Despite his victory here, he remembers why he came here. Are the Dragon Balls ready to use? Goku nods and says that they should have got the balls by now. Good. Then let's bring back your son. Paranga is summoned, and the first wish that is made is for Gohan to be revived, which is done. Back on Earth, Gohan wakes up exactly where he stood when Nappa had vaporized him just a few months ago. Not knowing what just happened, he gets up and flies back home. With the second wish, they then try to wish everyone else back who were offed by Freezer and his goons, but Poronga then states that he can only wish back one person at a time. Piccolo then tells Kami via telepathy to gather the Earth Balls to do that wish when they're ready. As for the other two wishes, Piccolo wishes for all the villages destroyed to be restored to their former state, and then, for their last wish, for Nemec to be transported to a different location in the universe. Piccolo turns to Goku and says that this is all just in case anyone from the Frieza Force seeking revenge for their fallen leader doesn't get the satisfaction of being able to find Nemec. When the time comes for the gang to leave, Piccolo chooses to stay behind on Nemec for a while, to help rebuild and also to help Guru in his final days before a new elder is chosen. That's the nail inside of him. Also, these warriors are looking a little sloppy and soft. I think I'll train them up a little. But hey, if you need me again, then you know my number. Well. Kami knows my number. 
Goku gives him the thumbs up. And with that, the Dragon Team head on back to Earth, taking a little longer than before, understandably, since Namek is now in a different place around a different sun system. When they get home, Goku and Gohan are reunited, and the little guy is filled in with what happened, amazed to hear that Mr. Piccolo not only was able to avenge him, but became so strong. Wow! I knew Mr. Piccolo was cool! They all laugh as a job well done is indeed done. We resume the story when the gang had left for Earth and Piccolo had chosen to remain on Namek. With Nail taking more of a role in the decision making this time around in this consciousness, the fusion set about the rebuilding of their people as best as he could. In fact, maybe improve it. This Piccolo was already pretty keen to learn more about his heritage, but with Nail now taking more of a front seat along for the ride, he knew just about everyone on the planet. That wasn't exactly hard to do since there were only a hundred or so Namekians alive right now. That was something that needed to be rectified sooner rather than later. With this newfound vigor and seemingly limitless power, we're going to be guessing somewhere in the region of 1.6 billion, seeing as how most fusions are about multiplying power. Piccolo is the strongest being in the universe right now, obviously with the exception of a certain cat and angel. With Guru's time running out, he takes Piccolo aside and lays out his vision for the future of Nemec. Dear Piccolo, Nail, you too have saved our people from a horrific evil. Nay, you may have saved the entire galaxy with removing Frieza. We are in your debt, and it pleases me so to see this planet free and at peace once more. Safe in our own little corner of the universe, perhaps with you by our side. We can become a force for good, not just for this world, but others too. It saddens me so, though I won't be here to see that. But I know that I leave this task in your capable hands. Thank you, my friends. Piccolo nods and vows to do what he can for the Namekians. Not long after that, the torch is indeed passed to Elder Mori, like in the original. And the small gaggle of slug people see their dear former leader disappear from view. With Mori now taking charge, the Dragon Balls were now at their full capacity again. Mori chose to maintain the status quo, mostly Guru's legacy, and looked to Piccolo as well as part of the rebuilding of the Namekian race. Piccolo, Nail, Wh what should I call you? Said a confused elder. It doesn't really matter. You're getting through to the right person. So what do you want? Piccolo was still showing his aloof nature, which did sometimes catch Mori off guard, unlike Nail's more gentle touch. Well, I, uh, I don't know where to start. With restoring our world to glory, we've been so content with our lot as of late, you know. I'm afraid that our ambition has taken a bit of a back seat in order for us to survive. Hmm, grunted Piccolo. It's quite obvious that's the case. Fortunately for you, my father was quite the ambitious type, although the end result wasn't as wholesome as you might care for. No matter, I can help you. Mori looked pleased to hear that, as well as the notion that Piccolo wasn't planning anything nefarious or immoral. A couple of weeks after that, Piccolo was training some of the Warrior Clan members, and he was pleased to see their progress. With Nail's soft touch and Piccolo's martial arts skills, these warriors were quickly getting the hang of what to expect. Not only that, but he could expect to see more warriors as more Namekians were being hatched. That mission was going on in the background as well as basic training. But there was one thing that Piccolo and the Fusion needed to make clear. This was the main thing that would change between Elder Guru and Elder Mori. The notion of Fusion not being a taboo. Before now, Fusion had been considered a forbidden technique, something that you could never do, as well as being impractical given how few Namekians there were at the time. But with Mori in charge and willing to listen to Piccolo's advice, the art of fusion was slowly being normalized within society that people could talk openly about it without people going shh in a twist. Piccolo sort of got what his father wanted, to be in charge of a planet. Albeit this time around, it was a much more amiable manner rather than a tyrannical monarchy that the king had originally intended. Suddenly, Piccolo got called away by a message from King Kai. It was a relay from Gohan. He flew some distance away from the warriors and took the call. Mr. Piccolo, how are you? Asked the happy Gohan. <laughs> I'm doing well, Gohan. Namek's in good hands. I hope you've been studying hard or whatever it is you do. Oh, for sure. Dad's also been training me up a little since he heard how good of a teacher you are. Piccolo chuckled. 
good. Oh, he's as hard as I was. Gohan paused for a moment. So when are you going to come back, Mr. Piccolo? Piccolo nervously shifted himself. Yeah, about that. You see, Gohan, I don't plan on coming back anytime soon. These people clearly need me. Also, this fusion of mine is quite besotted to them. Gohan paused again. Oh, he said meekly. Does that mean you're never coming back? Piccolo remained stoic. Remember your training, Gohan. There's no place for getting upset about such things. Besides, I didn't say I would never return. If you guys need my help, I will come. And hopefully, he looks to his warrior students. I can bring back up. Gohan sniffles and then says, he looks forward to seeing him again, hopefully. Piccolo reckoned that, thanks to Goku's tendency to get into sticky situations, that it won't be long until he's actually called upon, which makes Gohan laugh a little. With that, the two then have an awkward pause before Piccolo speaks. Gohan, I'm sorry. Huh? Sorry for what? We're not saving you in time. If I hadn't kidnapped you before, you... You wouldn't have been caught up in any of this mess. Don't worry about it, Mr. Piccolo. I knew you'd come through for me. And you did. So no being sad, okay? Piccolo laughed. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see you around, kid. See you, Mr. Piccolo. The communication ceased, and Piccolo was left there for a moment to think. He turned back to his students and pressed on. Years pass, and communication with Earth has been minimal to practically non-existent. In that time, Namek has been busy. Hundreds of Namekians have now been hatched, and the first initial babes have now started to reach initial adulthood, like Piccolo grew very quickly when Piccolo Jr. was fighting Goku in the martial arts tournament. With these warrior and dragon clan younglings coming to maturity, all thanks to the more rigorous and bountiful diet of Namek, the students of Piccolo are now each breaking the millions in power, and with Bulma's Namekian ship left on Namek, its technology was being looked at too, because remember, old Namekians were actually quite technologically advanced, and they actually started to explore the notion of space travel once more. The Namekians regaining their ambitions slowly but surely, but still remaining humble, something implored by Mori. There needed to be more of a change in ethos, unlike the complete past. Needless to say, the Namekians were more than capable of defending themselves now, and perhaps one day, they could help others in need too, paying the Dragon Team's efforts forward. However, one day, Piccolo was contacted by King Kai. Bad news from Earth. The Dragon Team had been dealing with a major case of androids, despite a guy from the future coming to warn them prior. Sounds like you might be needed, Piccolo. I reckon these goons are gonna wipe the floor with Goku and the others, even with Goku's new power. What? What new power? Oh, you didn't know? Goku's become the legendary Super Saiyan! Legendary... what? You see, because Frieza was taken out so quickly, Goku's journey to Golden Locks was only just realized, and this led to the Dragon Team's power being much lower than in the original. Huh. Now this I gotta see. Glad to hear you answered my question for me, but how are you gonna get to Earth fast enough? You're like miles away. Don't worry, I got a plan for that. Tell him I'm on my way. With that, Piccolo ordered the Dragon Balls be used at once to transport him to Earth. With the dragon ready to go a couple of hours later, Piccolo then paused. Hey, Mima. Mima, this Namekian from the game Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan Densetsu on the SNES, stepped forward. You've been standing out a lot lately. I think it's time I rewarded your efforts. When I get back, I want to fuse with you. Mima gasped. This was a big deal. He'd then become part of the great Piccolo, the person who would help bring such bounty to Nemec with Elder Mori, as well as guaranteeing their safety. Thanks to Piccolo normalizing the notion of fusion, the act of it now was more like a badge of honor rather than being something kept in the dark. Mima nodded, and with that, Piccolo headed off for Earth. When he got there, he could sense powers being snuffed out left, right, and center. The dragon team was struggling. Badly. Damn it, this is bad. Why didn't they contact me sooner? He charged forward, and within minutes, he could see the sight before him. Ten Shinhan and Yamcha had been picked off by two beings. That, of course, being Dr. Shiro and Android 19. And as for Goku, well, he was doing his best against the larger of the two, even with this new gold hair. What Piccolo could see was that the dragon team were related to see him, especially Gohan. Piccolo could sense that their energy and their powers were quite small in comparison to his, even after almost four years apart. They've been slacking. 
I thought they would have caught up with me already. Or at least gotten close. He was cursing under his breath, but Piccolo still flew down to help them, punching Android 19 square in the jaw, sending him flying for miles. Goku, catching his breath, was happy to see his friend again. Hey Piccolo, what are you doing here? Saving your sorry hides, Goku. Why don't you contact me sooner? Oh, well, Gohan told us not to. He said you were busy with stuff, and we thought we didn't need to call you also, so uh, I guess we're wrong there. Goku was looking a little sheepish, and Piccolo then looked to Gohan, who was equally nervous. I'm sorry, Mr. Piccolo. I didn't want to disturb you or anything. You sounded like you were busy, and I didn't want to bother you. Gohan! growled Piccolo. I told you I would come if you needed me! Lucky for you lot, Parunga is active, so he can help bring back your friends. But for now... He could sense 19 fast approaching again, and rushed off to utterly crush him. Piccolo's power now around about 2 billion. That's about slightly more than Super Vegeta at this point. With Jiro utterly bemused by Piccolo's unexpected boost, his last data about the Namekian was from the Saiyan Saga, he immediately escaped instead of grandstanding. Thanks to androids not giving out energy, the group were left clueless as to where to go. However, Piccolo's power was the talk of the town. With Vegeta not being here because he was off in the first part, and Trunks being replaced by future Gohan, who had yet to arrive, there was no other power, other than Goku, sort of, to counter. We'd better go after that droid before he causes more trouble. This is when Bulma arrives, and she gives the info about where to go. North City, in a cave, and with no further time to lose, Piccolo rushes off with Bomber's directions in mind, and the Dragon Team following some way behind. When they did get there, the Doctor had started to activate Androids 17 and 18, and future Gohan had arrived a further distance behind the Dragon Team, realising that these droids that had been dealt with weren't the versions he had. As the group surveyed Jiro, Piccolo asked Goku about the Super Saiyan power. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed. Piccolo, come on, it's like way stronger than my base form. I wish you were around to train with me, honestly. Yeah, well you can thank your kid for being assuming. You could have given Gohan an additional scowl, but he didn't want to upset him any further. With no time to lose, Piccolo led the charge into the laboratory and saw 17 and 18 dispatching the doctor and then just milling around. Then future Gohan arrived and he was aghast to see M M Mr. Piccolo. Piccolo turned expecting little Gohan, but then saw the future version. What was going on here? G go on spluttered a stunned Piccolo. Despite his power and the things that he had seen these last few years, the sight and feel of this future version of the kid that he had once protected was out of this world. How was it possible? Everyone then turned to future Gohan and were now equally baffled. He hadn't told anyone his name for obvious reasons, but now that it was out in the open, it was impossible to ignore. Goku then spoke up. I knew it! Your energy felt really familiar, but only more grown up than my Gohan. Krillin was blown away with how mature and imposing his young friend had become in the future now that he'd grown up. As for the little Gohan, he carefully walked up to his future self. Whoa, you're me? Y yeah, surprise. The did, did mom survive? She's alive and well, out in the countryside. Fortunately, the androids have no interest in nature, so anyone living in the sticks is pretty safe from their rampage. As for these ones, though, I intend to stop them with everything that I've got. Piccolo then scoffed. <laughs> well, why did I even come here, then? Everyone turned back to Piccolo, and the focus was then turned back to him. For 17 and 18, this sight was really confusing, and something they felt kind of left out on. They were starting to get a little bit frustrated by this, not understanding any of their backstory. Hey! shouted Seventeen. What's with all the ruckus? Did you have some kind of beef with the geezer here? If so, sorry about that. I just had to shut him up. He was way too annoying. Yeah, said a blase Eighteen. He was really getting on our nerves, so we put him out of his misery. Next question is, though, what do we do with you guys? Piccolo regained his composure and stepped forward, standing his ground followed closely by future Gohan. You fight us says future Gohan. I will not let you cause mayhem in this timeline. This timeline? You mean there are other versions of us that kick ass? Says Seventeen. Sweet! But future Gohan then launches a key blast which 
is not so sweet, taking out a chunk of a nearby cliffside. The androids spot this, but then look back to the future boy. What was that about? Was that to scare us? If so, no dice. No. Made you look. Huh? They both say, and before they know it, Piccolo bashes their heads together from behind, powering up a double punch as well in their backs, sending them straight to the floor, clutching their guts and coughing profusely. Not only had they not sensed that coming, because remember, they can't sense energy, but they weren't expecting such huge powers to hit them directly. Doubly effective. <laughs> Even in another dimension, the kid gets me. 18 stumbles upright again and is looking furiously at Piccolo. How? How dare you pull such a cheap stunt? Sis, look out! Gohan rushes in with Super Saiyan and takes 18 by surprise again in the same place as Piccolo did, making her writhe in pain once more. With that distraction, Piccolo rushes 17 and they fight, but the Namekian is way too strong for the droid. Despite his infinite engine, 17 is unable to keep up and is being whittled down to the point where he is starting to corrupt. Stop it! Stop it! No fair! No way, says future Gohan. You two are up to no good, and I will not let you harm my friends. With 18 being pinned down by Gohan as well, after being incapacitated, she shrieks to call time. Time out! Wait! Future Gohan kicks her into the side of the laboratory anyway. The rest of the dragon team are left bewildered. These two were in sync, despite never meeting before. And as for the present Gohan, he was amazed with the performance on display. <laughs> to think that one day he could be just as cool as this future self. Wow! With the two droids now on the back foot, and on their backs, Piccolo looms over them both. He, right now, he looked like he hadn't even broken a sweat. Can Namekian sweat anyway? But I'm not sure, but anyway, anyway. He's the one in charge here. Don't even think about getting up and causing any trouble here. Seventeen is coughing and aching all over. <sighs> Whatever, man. Just, just don't hit me again. We get it. You're strong. Just, just leave us alone, growls Eighteen. Good. Because if I hear anything about you running amok around here again, I will come for you. Do you understand? The two siblings look at each other and annoyingly nod. Fine, just just stay out of our way, man. We'll figure something out. Piccolo walks up to them, and then just casually steps on Seventeen's hand, making him shriek. I mean it. No trouble. Seventeen howls again, and Eighteen is terrified into submission. Uh, let's go, Seventeen. The guy's insane. Y yeah, let's go. Ah. With that, Seventeen and Eighteen just fly out of the lab and off to who knows where. Mr. Piccolo, why are you letting them go? They're lying, can't you see that? No, Gohan, they won't. Goku then pipes up in the defense of his future son. What makes you so sure, Piccolo? You seem awfully certain. There's no drive in them, no spark. They're just teenagers with a god complex. They think they can do anything, or at least they did. Now that their pride has been devastated knowing that I'm around, they won't be trying anything smart again. Wow, Mr. Piccolo, you're so cool, shouts present Gohan. <laughs> Thanks, but before he could finish that sentence, Piccolo looks up to the sky, and after a few seconds, he begs to be excused and flies off to look out. The group now have no idea what to do. There was nobody left to fight, seemingly. Krillin then speaks up. So, uh, do we just blow up this lab in case those two come back? Goku shrugs and nods. Good idea, Krillin. I kind of need to let off some steam. I sort of wanted to fight those two. Piccolo's gotten way strong. Almost too strong. And with that, the gang then proceed to blast apart the lab, including the pod that contains 16 unwittingly. Sorry folks, they had no idea how wholesome the robot could be, so... He got wasted with everything else. With the team now seemingly on cleanup duty, Piccolo arrives on the lookout at the request of Kami. Thanks to Piccolo's development in the story, there is no little to no animosity between the two, to which Kami is most grateful for. I'm glad you came so quickly, friend. There is a real danger that I must share with you, as well as a proposition. Hmm. First, the danger. The one I fought just now was kind of underwhelming. Kami chuckled. <laughs> I could tell. You've gotten much stronger than since we last met here, Piccolo. But yes, there is indeed one more threat to contend with down on our world, lurking in the shadows. I don't know what it is, but its energy is horrific. Like some sort of chimera of many souls. Souls that I am very familiar with, but I don't understand how they've coalesced into one. Piccolo nodded. Hmm. 
Probably one of those kids' siblings or something. Don't worry, I can take care of it. Those two were child's play. Before you go, one last thing. I can sense that you are fused with another Namekian. Yeah, what about it? I wish to ask you something. Ask me what? Don't be so coy, Kami. It doesn't suit you. Very well. I wish to fuse with you as well. What? Fuse with me? Yes. There's no need, old man. I could take out this monster on my own. I know you can, but the truth is, I have been guardian of Earth for nearly 300 years. I have seen all that I need to see and done as much as I can. In this age of ever-increasing powers and threats to our planet from unknown places out there in stars, I cannot keep up on my own as a singular entity. That is why I wish to be a part of you again. I can tell that you are nothing like your father, so that I am assured of. Piccolo laughed. <laughs> that means a lot coming from you. <laughs> I wish to do one last great thing before I die. Well, if I live on in you then, you know. Right. Piccolo thought for a moment and realized that this was actually quite a big deal. However, we don't get the standoff like in the original, and after only a few minutes, Piccolo nods and agrees to fusing. Before we do this, you do realize that when you become a part of me, the Dragon Balls won't work anymore. I know. But I trust that you will have an idea of what to do, friend. Thank you for hearing out this old fool. Strap yourself in, Kami. You're gonna be in for a wild ride. With that, they fuse. And when the light fades, Piccolo gets his bearings and starts to feel the impact of now fusing with Kami, who used to be a part of him after centuries apart. This leap in power was unreal. Now, instead of being as strong as Super Vegeta, let's just say Piccolo now is as strong as Super Vegito. So Piccolo then encounters Cell, and this matchup, no contest as it seemed. The reason? Well, Cell doesn't have any intel about Piccolo being fused from his own timeline. In that particular timeline, future Gohan went to help the Dragon Team, but Piccolo never returned to Earth as King Kai never really intervened. He didn't contact him on Nemec to ask for help. And so, Cell only knew about the Saiyan Saga era Piccolo. No fusions at all, so yeah. Yeah, this bug's toast. When Piccolo does come into contact with Cell, he is both impressed and yet not impressed. Cell, though, is taken aback at seeing the Namekian. P Piccolo, what are you doing here? And why does your energy read so much differently to what I expected? I don't know what your deal is, but a friend of mine told me you were a real danger to this planet. But now that we meet, you're nothing but an insect that I'm about to crush. Cell is looking kind of worried. He had very little information about this version of Piccolo, seemingly. And so he tried to use his Saiyan and Frieza nature to bluff his way out of this predicament for the time being. Wait, wait. Let's not be too hasty. I... Spare it. You have no sport at all. Before he could sense it, Piccolo tore a huge hole right through Cell's torso as he sped right past. Cell doubled over in pain and coughed profusely, much like how his siblings did just now. What? What? What was that? Give up, or else you will find yourself with more holes than now. <laughs> you may be a completely different Piccolo to what I remember, but I still remember this. He then regenerates the hole in his torso and Piccolo looks disgusted. <sighs> Disgraceful. To know my DNA is inside you, I can't allow you to live any longer. Piccolo powers up and wastes Cell in seconds, similar to how Trunks did in the future, after training in the past and all that. Cell is no more. With the dust cleared, Piccolo sighs. Good. I can't sense anything else wrong. Thanks, Kami. This will ensure that our people will never be harmed again. He flies back to the Dragon Team and explains what had happened, and that Kami had now fused with him, meaning that the Dragon Balls wouldn't work for the moment. Krillin looked scared, but before he could yelp any further, Piccolo explained that he knew of someone that could act as a replacement guardian. You might remember him, Gohan. And go on, he said to the two iterations. Dende, I sense great potential in him in my time on Nemec. I think he could make for a great guardian of this planet. Also, he and I are quite closely linked, so he can contact me directly if there's more trouble here. No need for King Kai to get in the way. The gang are thrilled to hear that, and Piccolo would be willing to help out more? Nice. But Piccolo, however, looked irritated at this. That doesn't mean, though, you can all slack off. The gang then stopped looking so happy. Come on, Piccolo. We're doing our best. I know that, but you can't just rely on me all the time cleaning up your mess. I'm not something you wheel out in a crisis like I'm some piece of furniture. I will assist you, Goku, but you need to keep up. All of you. We Namekians can only deal with so much. 
so I must ask you to keep on training, like your lives depend on it. Because one day soon, it might, and we might not be around to help. He then explains his reasoning, and his desire to build up a large squad of strong Namekians, who would one day be able to help out the less fortunate across the entire galaxy. So they're like, your squad? Says Yamcha. Pretty much, says the calm Piccolo. Don't worry though, I'll come back and visit. This isn't the last you'll hear of me, and if it works out, maybe I could take a break here. After some more pleasantries and goodbyes, Piccolo returns to Namek and explains to Dende about his proposal to become Earth's Guardian. Dende takes to this with open arms. Well, it'll be great to see Gohan and his friends again, but will I ever get to come back home again? But I'm sure we can figure something out with Mr. Popo. And as for Mima in the last part, the one that Piccolo promised to fuse with when he got back? Well, since Kami fused with Piccolo now, that plum had to be a delayed for a little bit longer. I'm sorry, Mima. I will fuse with you one day, but it's kind of cluttered in here for now. Mima looked a little sad, but he ultimately understood. In the years that followed, Dende did indeed take on the role as Guardian of Earth, and as you know, he did rather well in that role. And back to Nemec for Piccolo, they soon were able to come up indeed with different clan members, starting off with what we get from Dragon Ball Fusions, the Worker Clan Namekians. With the inclusion of this third clan, now after seemingly centuries without them, they could now focus on rebuilding the technological advances from Planet Nemec back in the day, being able to make more of the ships without the need of the Dragon Clan members having to figure something out with their own collective knowledge. The Worker Clan Namekians, they were really good at their job, and in the not too distant future, they were able to start doing what Piccolo wanted them to do, become guardians of lesser fortunate planets and then striding out to make Nemec glorious once again. And to think that this all happened from that time when Piccolo didn't save Gohan. And that's where we end things. So what did you folks think? Did you like this whole idea of Piccolo striving out for redemption in an even more direct manner? Do you think the Dragon Team will actually step up as well and make sure that they actually keep up with Piccolo? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!